Hi guys, it's Lauren J. I am back. So welcome or welcome back. No, I always do that wrong. Welcome back or welcome if you're new here. Thanks for stopping by. I just wanted to sit down and play with some makeup today. Some is new um, or newish to me. Most of it is. Um, some of it is some tried and trues that I've just been relying on uh, most of the summer. So I thought I would just go through some new things. I did pick up a couple of the pieces from the Kiko Milano Charming Escape collection. I think this is their fall collection. Not really sure, but I could not, I could not get over the packaging and the colors in this collection. So all I did was pick up a blush and two lip liners. So nothing too crazy, but um, you know, it was just a nice little, <laughs> cute little impulse purchase that I made. Um, and I'm wearing them today. I have the blush on my cheeks and I have the mauve lip liner on my lips uh, with a gloss. So pretty happy about that. I also used the Blush Crush palette from ColourPop, which is a newer palette to me. It's not brand new. I've had it for a while, but I haven't used it a whole ton. So I wanted to sit down and do a nice more subdued eye look with some focus on the cheeks and lips. I also picked up a few things from Sephora collection recently when they were having a buy more get more kind of a sale. So I picked up a couple of the match made brushes, these kind right here that have the pink handles. This is one of the um, smudger brushes. I also picked up this blush brush, this angled blush brush. And then I finally picked up the uh, Pisces um, Sephora Lip Stories lip liner so I've been wanting this for a while it's not really my color like it's like pinky coral leaning a little bit more blue I haven't even opened it yet but look uh, whatever it was nine bucks and yeah that's all I have to say it's got it's a Pisces it's a Pisces lip it's a Pisces lippy and then I finally picked up one that I've been wanting for a really long time. It's been on my wish list for a really long time. That is called Matinee. This is a nice deep red. It's more of a true red. It's a cream. I have a similar one that is a matte that um, is just really beautiful. But I wanted to get the cream formula too. So I have that. So I picked up two more of the Sephora lip stories from my collection. If you haven't seen my collection of Sephora lip stories, I'll link it up here. But yeah, I just thought that I would play with some new makeup and sort of distract myself from how itchy I've been lately. Allergies have been awful. Skin allergies especially have just been awful. So putting on makeup makes me feel nice and it's a Friday afternoon and I'm just ready to kick back and you know look nice for the evening uh put some makeup on my face for the evening feel feel real good for the evening i'm not going anywhere I'm not going anywhere but you know i just wanted to feel pretty for this evening um and then just get ready for the weekend and have some pizza and you know do do that thing you do on the weekends so if you want to find out more about the new Kiko Milano products um, and a little bit about the look that I did, keep watching because I will be getting into that right now. Hey guys, so extreme close up once again. So I thought I'd just do my makeup and share with you some new things that I got and just play with some stuff. So that's what we're going to do. I'm first just going to start off with the base like I normally do and I'm going to go in with the e.l.f. Uh, pore putty primer putty acne fighting putty prime I don't know what this is called anymore acne fighting putty primer um, this is the green one that has the salicylic acid in it and I've been really really liking this a lot seems to do a pretty good job of not having me break out which is really nice because the other primer that I really love, which is the Milk Hydro Grip, 
I feel like that in combination with a lot of other things really keeps my makeup on all day but I do think it does give me a bit of breakout along like my mouth and a little bit on my chin area so and maybe even on my forehead so I've never been able to prove conclusively that it's that primer but I feel like it's not happening as much with this one and it does tend to happen a little bit more when I'm using this so as much as I like it it is a bit expensive so I am going to be trying some other sort of jelly primers in the future just to see if I can get the effect of the hold without the side effect of it messing up my face. Um, I'm gonna go in with my Anastasia Dip Brow Gel. This is the one in caramel. This is my favorite color from them. So I like this in the um, the little pencil, the fine tip pencil, and in this Dip Brow Gel. I really do enjoy this Dip Brow. I find it's best to you have a little excess do the outer parts of your brows first and get rid of that excess um, and you obviously you'll do a little bit of cleanup um, but that kind of helps you from getting like the really fine areas right there a little too deep because you do kind of want to have a fade effect out this way and I just like this because it's a fast way to fill in and deepen up my brows without having to use up a 21, 20, 20, what is it, 23 now? $23 pencil, um, which I love that pencil, but um, I love the pencil and the brush, but it's just so expensive and I go through it so, so quickly. But with the dip brow gel, I get a bit longer last. So this is actually, I think, $18 or $20. I think they raised the price recently on Anastasia products. So um, not cheap either, but I find that it lasts me much, much longer. And I do love the color because um, naturally blonde. So I can kind of get away with a little bit of this color. It's supposed to be for redheads, but I don't find that it pulls very red on me. I find that it just pulls, makes my eyes just a, like a nice deep brown. So I like that. Next, we're gonna prime with the e.l.f. Putty Eye Primer. This is the one in, what's this color? This is the one in cream. And I like this one just for a real quick look when I'm not wanting I mean, this will keep your shadow on, but I find that it doesn't help as much with creasing as some other ones that I use. So um, if I'm doing a more simple look that I don't, I'm not too worried about um, the creasing or the colors getting mixed together on my eye during the day, I'll, I use this one, so. Okay, so the eyes are primed, face is primed, brows are done. And what I want to do today is play with some new items. So I got two of the items from the Hugo Milano Fall Collection. I just went and got a few of them. Uh, this came to Ulta pretty much right away when this collection released. So I have this uh, Charming Escape Silky Blush in 04 Mallow Field. This is the mauve one. I'll show some close-ups. But it's got this pretty imprint in it. So this is the mauve blush. I really wanted a mauve blush. So this leans very pink, but I'm, I'm looking for that sort of, you know, purplish leaning deeper shade. And then I got two of the lip pencils. So these are the long lasting lip liners in 01. This one is cappuccino and 04, which is the mauve they don't put the names they just put the numbers on it they don't put the names on it but it's um something mauve -y, cute flirty mauve or something like that um so yeah i'm going to be using these today and so because i want to kind of focus on my cheeks on my lips i want to do a lighter look so um i was trying to figure out what kind of palette 
I should use for this. And I kind of wanted to do a theme of like this fall sort of Baroque, like very like floral, deep colors. This is the packaging on the Kiko Milano stuff. So I kind of wanted to go with that theme. So I was thinking about the ColourPop Ornate palette. I just picked this up a couple of months back, but I think it's just a little too warm for what I want. Like I love these red tones, but I think that's a little too deep for what I want to do right now. Another one that is the obvious choice for a Movi collection is the Making Mauves from ColourPop. I really do like this palette. I haven't used it as much as I've used others, but it is very pretty. I love the shimmers in it and I love the deeper tones down here. So I think this one's just a little too purpley for what I want right now. I was also thinking about the That's Taupe. You could go with the cool tones, especially you've got this lip liner cappuccino. Um, I don't know if that's, I think that's cool toned. I'm not really sure. But anyway, but I don't know. You've got some that could lean that way, but I think, I don't think that's quite what I'm looking for. And then I thought about the Maybe Cosmetics Take Me to Paris palette. It's this pretty color story right here with the turquoise and some browns and pinks and like deep luscious pinks. I like these pinks. These are like sexy, sexy pinks, I think. Um, but um, I think what I'm going to do is go with <laughs> the Blush Crush palette from ColourPop as I almost hit myself in the face. Um, so I'm just going to keep it real simple and go with the Blush Crush. I'm going to go with the uh, deeper tones and then kind of use, I, I don't think that I've used all of the shades in this palette yet. Um, I know I've used this palette at least a couple times since I got it, but it has some really beautiful shades like this duochrome called Blossom Up is gorgeous. Just so pretty. Just so pretty. Um, and then they do have a super shock in here called Pop a Bottle, which is just lovely. Like, ugh. Like, just your basic pretty look. I mean, it's more of a spring palette, maybe not necessarily a fall Baroque palette, but I think if I'm going to do, if I'm going to concentrate on the lower half of my face, I kind of want to do something lighter on the top half of my face. So, and I don't mind um, using palettes out of, out of season. I don't really care about that. Um, another one that I thought might be really nice with um, this collection would be the e.l.f. Rosewater. As you can see, that's very close to the Blush Crush. Not quite. I think it's a little bit more um, neutral than sort of pink, but that would be that would be another affordable option if you like that one. But to start off, I'm gonna go in with the deepest shade, which is Blush Wine, and I'm going to take a Zoeva two two eight Lux Crease, and this is a matte with shimmer in it. And I know people don't love these types of shades. I like them for work out here. I don't like them on the lid, but I like them out here on the outer V. I think they make a really pretty, like if you're gonna go dark out here, it does add a little bit of dimension with the sparkle. I mean, it doesn't always stay. Um, but I've never gotten like a huge amount of fallout from these. And even the fallout that is the glitter particles are so light that it just kind of doesn't really matter. It just would end up looking like maybe part of your highlight or something. I don't know. I think if you're a very exacting um, type of person with your makeup and you just don't want glitter on your face, I mean, I get it, but um, it doesn't tend to make that much of a difference to me. I do sometimes worry about when I'm going out for a walk at lunch that, you know, I've got sparkles all over my face, but I've kind of gotten older over that as I've gotten older. So like, I don't, if people want to stare at me for my makeup, it's fine. As you can see, that is a very deep color. And since I'm doing a sort of more simple look, I just kind of want to focus it on the outer edges here. I do wish I could get these a little bit more even. I just, as 
a left-handed person, this side tends to be a little bit more precise and this side just tends to be a little bit more blocky. And I don't know, it's just, it's the way that I hold the brush. So. Sisters, not twins, I guess. I think we're gonna do a bit of this matte cheek to cheek in the crease. Just kind of lightens it up and fades out this part here so it doesn't look like a bruise. And I do tend to do my crease a little bit higher because of my hooded eyes because as soon as I lift my lids you won't see it. Um, so I just tend to put a bit up here because putting it here, right here, you're never going to see it with my hooded eyes. So. so I think that actually does look very mauvish. I mean, you know, a bit rosy, but I like the purple and the pink together. I don't think I've done too much with Enamored. This one, it's the less flashy of the shimmers. So I think I'm going to go in with that on the lid. And I think we can do a little bit of pop a bottle, the super shock on the inner corner. Then I'm going to do a wing using the number seven amazing eyes pencil. I picked this up in a number seven advent calendar a few years ago. And then if you want, you can kind of smudge it out with a liner brush, clean it up a little bit. Just like the way that it contrasts with the blue of my eyes. I don't know, I've just been really liking it lately. So, right. so then we're gonna take a wet sponge. This is the e.l.f. sponge and we're gonna go in with the foundation. This is the Protect and Perfect Advanced All-in-One Foundation from number seven. This has SPF 50 in it, and I've really been enjoying it. It is a nice, light foundation. It has some air bubbles in it. Um, it really reminds me of my Anastasia foundation, the Luminous foundation, except this one is a little bit cooler and not as much coverage, which for me is perfectly fine right now in the summer. I'm not looking to throw a bunch of concealer and powder and foundation on. I just want something to kind of dull down the redness in my face and not stick to dry patches. Um, I've been having a rough summer with my skin allergies lately. Um, well, not lately, just all summer. I've been having um, a rough time with dryness here, with eczema, you know, and just um, being very careful. Like, I'm always very careful when I take my eye makeup off or, you know, if I ever use a scrub with like a little bit of grit to it, I go in very, very gently. Like I don't want to disrupt any eczema or anything that could, you know, get infected or, you know, just gross. Um, so I, I'm pretty, pretty careful. I wash my face every night and double cleanse. And uh, so, you know, I try to be very careful, but allergies and skin conditions, I don't know, have just gotten pretty bad for me lately. So it's another reason I like to do my makeup. It's just a little bit of a pick-me-up. 
So I went in and set everything with a little bit of finishing powder. Now I'm going to go in with my Anastasia bronzer in Rosewood. All right, let's go into the Kiko Milano blush. So this again is the Silky Blush in Mallow Field. This is their Charming Escape collection. And this was really, really nice. It came in this little, um, it came in this box, but it also like, it came in this little tissue wrapper. It came in this little tissue wrapper with this little gold seal, which I thought was super cute. It's not a cheap blush. I think it was like $20. The lip liners were 10 a piece. Um, so not at all a cheap collection, but um, I'm kind of impressed at least with the packaging. It feels like that NARS rubberized matte packaging, and then it does have this beautiful imprint in it, which I'm a sucker for an imprint. So I'm gonna go in with this um, Sephora blush brush. This is from their Match Made collection. Just a little bit on there, and might as well use the mirror. Ooh, that's a nice little um, pop of pigment for as much as I put on the br on the brush, blush, brush, 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 brush. I like that. And I think this does have a bit of luminosity to it. I don't think it's completely matte, just judging from the way it looks in the pan. I don't see any sparkle in it. I think that definitely looks very pretty. It definitely goes with this. Definitely. Do the other side. And you really don't you really don't have to use much to get payoff here. You can see I haven't really disturbed the imprint in there at all. But I've got a lot of pigment on there. So I'm very fair, take from that, but you will. So because this is more cool toned, I am going to take my favorite Becca highlight. This is the Berlin Girl Glow. It has that um, bluish pearl with the pink base to it. So not looking for a super BAM highlight, just something that complements the blush color because you kind of want the focus to be on that. And with that said, I'm just going to go over the highlight a little bit with the blush brush so it doesn't cover up too much. On to lips. We are gonna go with the zero for the, I think it's flirty mauve. It's mauve something. We're gonna go with the mauve pencil. These are $10. I bought them in hopes that they, because I do like a lined lip with like a gloss or something really easy on top. This is the Charlotte Tilbury in Pillow Talk. It's, I bought this in Germany a couple of years ago. I absolutely love it, but it's $22. So yeah, I'm hoping that I'm able to find a nice lip liner. They're not the same color, but just a nice lip liner has good formula and is really easy and doesn't wear off too much. And I like that it's transferable. It's not too creamy, but not stiff. It's a twist up, which I like. 
And these do have a little sharpener in the end if you pull the um, bottom part out. So it's got this little sharpener in the end. I like that. That's a very pretty, pretty color. I want to look at this next to Pillow Talk. I may have lied. It is a bit creamy because um, at least um, on the hand, uh, it's a little bit fragile. Okay, that's really, really close. Like, this one's just a little bit lighter, but these are really, really close. So I'm super excited about that. Just for fun, we will swatch the um, cappuccino shade. And that's also pretty close to... Um, Pillow talk, so I wonder if this would be close to like iconic nude or something like that, which I still haven't bought because again, it's $22 and this is 10. So, so I do want to go in with a little bit of gloss on top. So I'm going to use this e.l.f. Retro Paradise in Electric Lemonade. These aren't incredibly pigmented or sparkly, despite what they look like in the tube. So As you can see, it's not adding a bunch of blue glitter, but I do think it complements the sort of more cool toned. Now I have to wash this brush off. <laughs> we will just give it a spritz with the Dewy Set from Anastasia. I am almost out, except I do have a backup, so lucky me. And to finish it off, we're going to go in with the Maybelline Sky High Mascara. I just bought this recently. Everybody's been raving about it. At least the people that I watch have raved about it. And I do like this type of wand. I think it works better for my lashes. I do like the hourglass type of wand too. Um, that's the type that gives you volume. This gives you length. And it's also just a little bit more precise for me. Now, any formula as you use it over time is going to change a bit because you're getting air into it and it's getting a little bit thicker. So right now I'm really enjoying this because it's keeping my lashes separated but long because I don't tend to worry about lash volume too much lately. Um, but if this starts to get clumpy over time or, you know, just isn't working, who knows? But right now, relatively new, I am enjoying the Sky High Mascara. Now, I think just to add a little bit of something, I'm just going to add a little bit of Blossom Up, this sort of duochrome from the sh from the um, Blush Crush. I'm just going to put a little bit of that underneath here, just to lighten up a little bit and move, like I'll give a little bit of, really, really lightly though, really lightly. I don't want to call too much attention to the eyes, but... Just want a little something there. Just give the lower lashes some love. One thing I did notice with this mascara is if you did make a boo-boo with it, don't wait for it to dry down. If it dries down, it'll be a little bit harder to get off. Now with some mascaras, you do have to wait for the dry down, but for me, I find I have to go in right away um, with a q-tip or something because um, I will mess up and I do mess up um, but yeah I gotta go in right away <clears throat> otherwise the dry down is just like it's a, it's a mascara that stays on your face so you want to go in and clean that up as soon as you can okay so that's the finished look with the Kiko Milano Charming Escape Silky Blush in Mallow Fields a bit of Becca Berlin Girl Glow. 
and the Anastasia Rosewood Bronzer. And then of course the Charming Escape in Fleur de Mauve, I think, with the electric lemonade gloss on top. And the simple-ish look from the Blush Crush palette from ColourPop. So again, this is the finished look with my hair down. I always forget to take my hair down at the end of these videos. So I'm always, I just always forget. It's just always up all the time. So I finally remember to take it down for the, the intro and the outro. So this is the finished look. I really do like my hair down right now. Doing updos just aren't working for me at the moment because of all the frizz. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed checking out some new makeup with me. Uh, chatting about some new makeup with me and just helping distract me from how itchy I am and <laughs> I hope you guys are doing well drop a comment below if you would like I would love to hear from you don't forget to like or comment or subscribe any of those things would be great and I'm clearly really bad about asking people to do that so at least I remember to do it Anyway, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you have a good weekend. Hope you are staying safe. Don't forget to wear a mask when you go out. And it felt like maybe, maybe if you, if you want to make somebody stay, just, just be kind. You never know what somebody is going through. So anyway, uh, thanks so much again for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye.